So um, all of us have been involved with the show for many years, but the two of you have done so many productions, not only Chorus Line, but other shows, but Chorus Line in particular. But this time, we were shooting a documentary while we were auditioning for the show. As we know, this is the first time that Equity ever permitted uh, cameras in an audition room. That's, uh, we, we, we got them to agree to that um, condition. Uh, otherwise, we could never have done the, uh, the material, uh, never gotten the documentary done. We did this special thing, if you remember, about the releases, because we had to get a release from everybody. Right. Right. But, but what we worked out with Equity, and they were incredibly cooperative about this, is that for 48 hours after every shoot, an actor could come back, and if they had second thoughts, they could say no. I didn't know that. That's oh, fascinating. Know that. Did you know They that? could come back know. and go to Equity and say, you know, I've rethought it. I, you know, I look like a jerk, you know, oh, or, that's I, great. or I hurt my ankle or I tripped and I don't want to be on the film. But that was so important because it really was a insurance. A, a, a real insurance, insurance yeah. for them, but also a co collaboration. It was mm -hmm. a collaboration yeah. with, with the actors. And what about the dance? I mean, bio you talk about what dancers are like today as opposed to 1975. What's the difference, if any? If I had to audition for the show now, I would never get in. I would never get in. In those days when Bayek and I were dancers in shows, uh, we, there was a singing chorus and a dancing chorus. And the, and the singing chorus always got the small little roles. They never gave it to the dancers. They figured we didn't know how to talk, you know? <laughs> but you have to come in now and you have to dance like Baryshnikov, sing like Pavarotti, and act like Olivier. And usually the dancing part of the audition these days is the easiest it's part because they all dance like crazy, you yes. know. It's to get them to sing and, and, act, and act on top yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, what was interesting, wasn't it? I mean, you'd see all these people <clears throat> dancing so beautifully and you guys would have assessed the dancing and they'd be wonderful and they'd be so great and you'd look <laughs> at these people and say, oh, please, let please. that person be able to play yeah. Maggie. Oh, yes, let that person be able to play Maggie. And, and then they'd sing. Yeah. And, and the roles are so specific now in terms of the notes they have to hit and the ethnic quality to the roles and uh, the quality of the characters that we like to mix it up and change that a bit. But ultimately, as Bayark always says, the show casts itself. When we did the show originally and we were turning out many cop copies of the show, we did it uh, totally like the original. It was very, very important from the very beginning and, and Michael sent me to all the companies and I would go every two or three weeks to those companies and make sure that they were doing the course line the way yeah. Michael wanted it. And so, you know, 35 years later and right. I've directed all these companies, when Bobby and you came and said, you know, I'm going to be doing the show again, then, you know, I said, Phew. You know, I, I can relax because all of those years I was trying to really keep it pure yeah. and true to what Michael and, yeah. and Bobby wanted. And Bob said, okay now, Bayork, you can relax <laughs> because, you know, we're going to open up the Pandora box, yeah. you know, and explore. And we've made a conscious effort to personalize these roles with the new cast and to draw out what was best in them. Interestingly enough, some of it reverted back to the original because it was better, mm. but 50% of the time we could make new adjustments and it suited these actors a lot more. You go to their strengths again. It's like Donna had this incredible back and the back bends she could do was, were stunning. And, and Charlotte's her port de bras, her arm movements. And so you, you, you adjust to their strengths. You know, I found this time a lot of the, the dancers that came back and, and to see the show, it's 30 years later, yeah. and they were really into the book. Yeah. Whereas when they were younger, they were into the dancing, and yeah. oh, we love the dancing. And well, 30 years later, yeah. Yeah. they couldn't get over the book. The book. Yeah. What about that, though, the book? I mean, you seldom have basically three book writers. I mean, uh -huh. you had Michael as the conceiver, and he wrote two, and then you have... Jimmy and, and Nick, and how did that, uh, let's talk a little bit about how that developed, the book. You know, Michael 
you know, was spurred on by the tapes. And uh, that, that was the opportunity of a lifetime for him when that evening occurred. And that was the springboard. And then everything evolved from that. And Nick being part of the first <clears throat> the interviewees and right. being a character in the show and a writer yeah. worked with Michael, I guess, and then uh, Jimmy came in later. Correct? Yeah. He came well, in later. And, and hiring Nick to put a first draft together was uh, amazing for Michael to take that risk because Nick wanted to be a writer and we didn't know if he could write, but he was so amazingly articulate that night in his storytelling. Mm -hmm. And Almost Mike, word for word. Word for word in, in the monologue in reads the, the same monologue. way. Mm -hmm. And Michael knew that in this evening that would be the center of the show, that yeah. monologue. Yeah. And so he took a chance on Nick, and Nick was tremendous. But Jimmy was brought in to help fabricate the Cassie Zach stuff, where we needed to invent uh, mm. dialogue, and uh, as opposed to edit, you know, right. and right. to. We didn't have a springboard for that. We we had to create that from scratch. And Ed Cleveland's lyrics, I think more than any other show I've ever known, yeah. is so much the book too. Yeah. It's almost like he's another book writer. Oh yeah. Oh, so yes. I mean, when you talk about moving, you know, yeah. the, the action forward, it's it's the epitome of it. And Ed spent a lot of time with every actor in the show, yeah. Yeah. talking to them and getting their stories even more extended and more yeah. involved. And uh, we found Ed Kleban, interestingly enough, he came and presented a show to us called Gallery, which never got on, but, and he composed and did the lyrics for it. And Michael said, boy, this guy is good. We've got to remember him. You know, and yeah. that's how Ed got involved, and and, uh, even though he was a composer yeah. as well. Yeah, and a composer too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, but, but go back, I want to talk about again, just about theater. The, 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 the sense of space and no props, nothing, as yeah. opposed to the other kind of theater, which is super Well, we nice. had come off also two Hal Prince musicals, Company and Follies, which were gigantic. Follies was gigantic. And we had done Coco and Promises and all these opera. Big, 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 big heavily scenery. produced, star-driven musicals. And Michael always wanted to do a show about dancers. He wanted to be in control in the room. He didn't want to have to negotiate with personalities. He only wanted to deal with his own. And I remember Robin Wagner saying to him, well, Michael, well, how do you see the set? And what do you see? And Michael had a piece of chalk in his hand, and he went to the floor, and he went, drew the line down the floor, and he said, that's the set. Mm -hmm. White line. A white yes. line. And we could do it anywhere in the world. You know, and it didn't need anything. Yeah. 